Hey there friends, welcome back to another session on light. Previously, we had spoken about reflection of light in plane mirrors and certain characteristics shown by those reflections. In this session, we'll justify those characteristics. Technically, a question that's probably sprouting in your mind right now is why we're doing this. Well, let's have a look at this image. What we see before us is a structure so rich in beauty that it has been immortalized in the hearts and minds of many. When it's looked at, one wonders. For something to look so good, how much work in terms of planning or calculation would have gone in behind the scenes, just like when we see a movie. This behind the scenes concept is not just limited to this castle alone. It is associated with so many things we see around us, including daily life objects and occurrences. Even something as simple as running has a lot more going on than what you see. So who makes these background plans? Mother Nature, of course. And why do we track and study them? Because that is what we do in this subject. After all, physics is the study of nature. These plans are tracked with the help of assumptions or theories. So, we theorize all that goes on in the universe. This is again what we'll do to explain how images are formed in plane mirrors. Earlier, we just saw those ray diagrams. In this session, we learn how to make them. Friends, this process is not at all difficult. Let's take it step by step. Let there be a plane mirror denoted as M, M dash. Now, let there be any object AB placed in front of it. As mentioned before, for an image to form, at least two rays of light are required to be in the picture. So, let's assume that there are two rays coming from either part A or B of object AB. So, if the rays are coming from point A, then let AP and AQ be incident onto the mirror at points P and Q respectively. After they strike the mirror, ray AP will be reflected as P, P dash, while ray AQ will get reflected as Q, Q dash. Let P, N1 and Q, N2 be the normals drawn at points P and Q respectively. Thus, following the laws of reflection, angle APN1 is equal to angle P dash PN1 and angle AQN2 is equal to angle Q dash QN2. Now, when we place our eyes between P dash and Q dash, or rather when we look at the mirror, the image appears to come from a point behind the mirror. Let's call this point A dash. The point A dash can only be formed once the reflected rays P P dash and Q Q dash are produced backwards and meet behind the mirror. As A dash is just a point, it is referred to as a point image. The point A dash is virtual as these rays do not actually meet but appear to come from point A dash when produced backward. This entire process can be repeated for another point B on the object AB. So, in this case, the image or point image formed will be B dash. In this way, other points on object AB, like say X, Y, and Z, and so on, can be considered, leading to formation of images X dash, Y dash, Z dash, respectively. As each point of any object forms a point image in the mirror, it is understood that if all points are considered together, the image or what we call reflection of the whole object is seen in the mirror. So considering A and B as two points at the extreme opposite ends of object AB and other points like X, Y and Z etc between A and B, if we compare them to their images in the mirror, we would notice that the images are of the same size. If we were to give object AB a few distinguishing features like a head and body to divide the object into an upper part and a lower part and compare this to the image, we would find that the position of these features are the same in the mirror image too. This shows that the image is not upside down or inverted but rather upright and erect. Another very interesting feature of the plane mirror is that the perpendicular distance of the image behind the mirror is equal to that of the object in front of it. In other words, if the mirror is exactly in the center and you are the object, 
then the distance from your reflection to the mirror is equal to your distance from the mirror. So let's see how that's possible. Friends, we require a little bit of geometry in this, but it's not difficult. Let's again consider at least two rays of light coming from any point O on the object AB. Let ray OE and OF be incident onto the mirror at points E and F respectively. Ray OE is incident at an angle onto the mirror and is reflected as ray E E dash. Let N1 be the normal drawn onto the mirror. Ray OF is incident normally on the mirror and gets reflected back along the same path. Let both these rays be drawn back to meet at point I. Now, for the ray OE reflected as E E dash, angle OE N1 is equal to angle N1 E E dash following the laws of reflection. Angle N1 E O is equal to angle E O F as they are alternate angles. Angle E dash E N1 is equal to angle E I F as they are corresponding angles. Therefore, angle E O F is equal to angle E I F. Now, let's consider the triangles E O F and E I F. Angle E F O is equal to angle E F I as both are 90 degrees. Therefore, E F is the common side. Therefore, triangles EOF and EIF are congruent. So, length OF is equal to length IF. But in the figure, OF is the distance of the object from the mirror and IF is the distance of the image from the mirror. So, from this we have just proved that the object to mirror distance is always equal to the image to mirror distance in case of a plane mirror. With this, we have technically justified the properties of images formed in plane mirrors. That's it for now. Until next time, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity.